Here are some really easy tips and tricks that you can make to improve your transition time in a duathlon or a triathlon event that don't require any additional training or skills whatsoever. So let's jump right into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Lucas, your average middle pack H group amateur triathlete, something along those lines. So the other day I was talking to a friend who's doing his first run bike run event. Is that still a triathlon or is that a duathlon? Because you have three events, but only two disciplines. Anyways, we were talking about what can you do to make your transition times. And in this case, it doesn't matter if it's from a swim to a bike, from a swim to a run, run to a bike whatsoever. How can you make that transition time faster? And I think it is very easy. There are a few things that we can do. We speaking as average middle pack people who join Ironmans or do athlon and we just do it for fun. These are not the tiny little things that the pros do to get every second out of the transition. So let's jump right into it. What can we do and improve on in transition that actually gives us the biggest return, meaning saves us the most amount of time. So while you might be thinking, oh, if I put my socks in the shoes already, that will save me two seconds when I get into transition because I don't have to pull the sock on or undo the socks or undo the shoe. I already have that done. That is true but it also only saves you two seconds. So let's start by what can actually save you minutes. In a lot of these events, the transition area can be extremely long and Ironman is known for having extremely long transitions once you come out of the water. Let's take for example, Oceanside, which I did in April. From the point where you come out of the water until you exit T1, you actually have to run 0.4 miles to get through transition. That is almost one kilometer of running. That running alone, if you run it at an average pace, your 430 or five minute kilometer pace, that's already 430 or five minutes in transition without even having changed into your shoes and you get to put a helmet on and get on the bike. So while putting the sock in your shoe saved you two seconds, if you would just run from a five minute kilometer down to a 330 kilometer and haul butt to get out of transition, that already there saves you a minute 30 of your overall transition. So you have to look at how fast are you getting out of the water and to your bike or to your run shoes and then back out of transition. This is where we as amateurs can save the most amount of time because we have those very long transition areas. So best thing to do here is just to haul butt and get out of transition. However, sometimes that might just not be an option. Again, let's take Oceanside 70.3 as an example here. When you come into T2 from your bike, you actually put into a single file. You're still in the bike on the saddle. You're not in the bike. That'd be weird. You're on the saddle and you're going through transition. And again, that's about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 miles and they put you single file and you cannot go fast through that. So hauling butt here might not be an option. So what else can we do to save some time? The next thing here is to just be calm. Take your time putting your equipment on. You're saving a lot more time just calmly taking off your wetsuit, putting on your socks, putting on your shoes. Then if you're trying to do it really fast, then your wetsuits get caught or your shoe gets stuck somewhere, your sock rips, anything can happen and that will cost you a lot more time. So just do everything calmly and you will get it done in one try. And this leads us to the very last part and it's not necessarily practicing your transition, which you absolutely can do, but let's be honest, we're already spending every available minute that we have in our busy life on training. We're not really taking the time to practice our transition. So what we can do is lay out everything in a good order and minimizing the equipment that we take into transition and the gear that we put on. Let's dive into that. And this is what I noticed made the biggest difference for me. For example, it is very easy to get absolutely geeked out about equipment, to get stressed out about what socks to wear on the run, on the bike, 
Do you need a hat on the run or sunglasses on the run? Do you need bike gloves? Yes, no. Should I change my shirt? Should I just wear the same shirt? All these things, the more we can eliminate, the easier we're gonna have it in transition. For example, what I started doing is I skipped the socks on the bike ride. And I acknowledge this might not be for everyone to ride without socks in your bike shoes, but you're not really moving in your bike shoe meaning rubbing back and forth a lot anyways, they are pretty tight. So getting away without socks is pretty comfortable actually. I didn't feel any difference or had any issues leaving my socks off. What I did gain from that though is that I'm not having to put on really tight cycling socks on my wet feet right when I get out of the swim and having to bend over trying to pull those socks on. So just leaving that piece of equipment off saved me a lot of time, but it also saved me a lot of mental space not having to think about that piece of equipment. And then once I noticed that works really well, I did the same with my cycling gloves. Cycling gloves are a luxury. You don't need those in a race. There is no point of having cycling gloves. You are uncomfortable. That's the point of a race. Why put cycling gloves on? No benefits to it. So taking that piece of equipment away, again, I don't have to put cycling gloves over my wet hands after the swim and I don't have to think about that. I don't have to think about packing these items when I'm going through my list the night before the race and I don't have to think about it when I get through transition. So I save time in transition and I save a lot of headache and headspace not having to think about those things in the first place. And very lastly, let's make sure that we put the equipment in transition in a reasonable order, especially in an Ironman, anything that really isn't your local triathlon or duathlon event, we do not get a lot of space in transition as amateurs if you've taken a look at ironman transitions there is 2500 people crammed in a parking lot and the slots are so tiny we really have to make sure we utilize our space efficiently so what i started doing is i lay out the pieces of equipment in the order that i'm putting them on for example what this means to me is that i have to put my sunglasses on before i put my helmet on and that is because i use a strap around my sunglasses so that they don't fall off because I wear contact lenses and if too much wind is getting in my eyes, my contact lenses are going out and then I'm riding blind. So that means I have to put my sunglasses on my head before I put my helmet on. If I would put my helmet on, well, how am I gonna get my sunglasses on with the headband? It doesn't work. And those are the small things at the ends. Once you figure out all the big ones and hauling butt, I cannot say it enough, haul butt through transition, then we can worry about those things. Make sure you lay out your transition in the order that makes sense and in the order that you're gonna put on your equipment. It saves you headaches because you don't have to think about and figure out what else you're missing and you don't have to start over once you made a mistake potentially. But that is really all that I have for the transition. Transition areas can be very stressful, especially for us amateurs. Pros do these things over and over and over and they are incorporated in their training. As amateurs, we usually do them about once or twice a year when we actually race and not beyond that. So making sure that we hurry up to get to our transition, we stay calm in our transition and we are organized in our transition and then get the hell out of sight once we put all our equipment back on and onto the bike or the run. This will save us the most amount of time. Keep in mind at the end, unless you're going for competing or for an absolute personal best and you're already really thin on your margin of error, spending an extra minute or two in transition over the course of a 70.3 or a full Ironman does not make a difference whatsoever. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next video. Hazley, really? Not right now. A strip? A strap? Because I use a strap around my sunglasses.